Hello friends, this video on data handling part 1 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Topics to be covered in this lesson are Introduction, Data, Organizing Data, Tally Marks, Representation of Data, Pictograph, Bar Graph, Data handling. Now, before we understand what do we mean by data handling, it is important that we know what exactly do we mean by data. So here in this slide, we talk about an example. We talk about a scenario which is which may be very common to your day to day life. For example, if the attendance of class sixth for one particular month, January 2017 is given as follows. So this is the, the this is the um, information that is given to you that okay these are the attendance of class six for the entire month of January. Now what does these numbers actually tell us? It tells us that uh, fifteen were present on first of January, fourteen students were present on second of January, seventeen on third, nineteen on fourth, etc. and so on. So it actually tells you how many students were present or what was the attendance for each day of January two thousand seventeen. Now looking at this set of data, now this is data, this is an example of data that is uh, a set of numbers which convey some information. So these numbers 15, 14, 17, 19, 10, 6, 17, they, all of these together they convey some information, they convey some message to us. So this is data. Now looking at this set of data, if I ask you certain questions like if I ask you who all were absent most of the days or which student was absent on a particular day? Will you be able to tell that to me looking at this data? No, not really. Who is the best attendee? That is, which student is the one who gives a very good attendance? Or for that matter, if we ask that which day of January had maximum attendance, for example, when you look at it, if you start looking at it very carefully, then maybe you will be able to tell that, okay, the day when 19 students were present, that has the maximum attendance. But you know, it would take you some time to find out which is the maximum value or which is the highest number out of these or who is the worst attendee. So these kind of questions, answering these kind of questions is quite difficult looking at the kind of data which is given to us. It's like so many numbers written given comma 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 so looking at the data itself it, it seems very confusing so answering these questions become tedious now let's look at another scenario now let's talk about a shopkeeper now uh, for a particular shopkeeper his sale for different items in a year like in his shop maybe he is keeping different items he sells books he sells pens pencils notebooks uh, rulers and color color books etc now for all the different items his sale in rupees was given as this for maybe for pen it was rupees 46000 for erasers it was 51000 for notebooks it was 130000 and so on so in that fashion for different items the sale was given for a particular year now looking at this data again can you tell which items gave better sale or which month gave better sale now one interesting thing is why do we even need to answer these questions well if you have answers to these questions then it will help you to plan for a better future for example if the shopkeeper knows which items give better sale then maybe for the next year he would buy more of those items let's say that the shopkeeper sells both books notebooks and pencils and he found that the sale for books are more a lot more and the sale and the sale for pencils are very less so what he can do is maybe for his next inventory he can keep less pencils in stock and more books in stock so how did he get to know this by analyzing the data of the previous year so it is very important that the data that we have with us that is uh, you know uh, that can be well interpreted that is looking at that data we should be able to fetch some information which might be helpful for us in future but looking at this kind of data it is quite difficult to answer such questions so basically analyzing the data becomes very difficult let's take one more example let's say that uh, there's a cricket match going on and the runs scored in the match by 11 players are given as these 
So there are 11 players in the team and all of their scores are given like this. So if I ask you who scored maximum or who scored less, I'm sure that you will be able to answer it, but it will take you some time to actually find out. You know, you, you will have to look at it very carefully, 50, 100, 80, 10, and then you will have to decide which one is more and which one is less. So it, it's a little inconvenient and it's a little time consuming as well. So one thing was common in all these three examples, whether we talk, uh, talked about the attendance in the class or we talked about the shopkeeper's sale or the score of the cricket team. So one thing was common that since the set of data was huge, so it was very difficult to analyze the same. And why do we need to analyze the data so that we can take better steps in future? For example, if if we could analyze the data for attendance, the students who were not punctual, they can be advised to become more punctual, right? Similarly, if the shopkeeper knew his sale or he could analyze his sale in the previous year well, then he could manage his inventory better in future. Similarly, if the run scored by the cricket match was uh, analyzed, then the team can be managed better for the future matches. So, you know, data analysis really helps and it is really, really needed. So, what do we do? What is the solution that we have? Okay. So that solution is nothing but data handling. So we will learn in this lesson, how can we handle data in a better way so that the interpretation or analysis of data becomes easier. So with all the above examples, we learned that data is nothing but a collection of facts or numbers that give some information. Whether you talk about the scores of the players in a cricket team or you talk about the attendance of a class uh, on various days of a month. So you look at those set of numbers and they give you some information about something. Let's look at one example here. Scores of students in a class represent data. Now, let's say that if I do not write this, that this, these, this, these numbers represent the scores of students in a class. If I do not mention that they represent scores of students, then will these numbers make any sense to you? Like simply somebody sent you a sheet where numbers like 75, 45, 70, 70, 42, 55 and so on are written. So will that make any sense to you? No. Until and unless it is mentioned that these numbers numbers represent the scores of students in a class. So the moment that is mentioned, it will make a lot of sense to you. Now here I have taken a small set of data where you just have some um, scores of some nine students because there are total nine numbers here. Now normally in a class in general, we have at least 50 to 60 students in a class. So if I want to send the scores of students in one class, it will actually consist of some 50 to 60 scores or 50 to 60 numbers. So when you look at those numbers, you can actually fetch a lot of information out of that. So now let's see. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com for free quality education. You can learn with a simple four-step learning process wherein you can watch video lessons, you can ask your questions, you can refer notes and you can take a free online test. We have content for class 6 to 12 on physics, chemistry, mathematics and biology along with practical videos. So please subscribe to our channel for daily updates. Thank you.